Hey guys, we're back for some more standard. Um, yeah, just been loving this deck here. Um, it's just, uh, wow, I don't know what to say. It's so much fun to play. So yeah, I'll have a link in the description for my previous video, which kind of goes over sort of all the cards in the deck. Um, but let's jump into some games. If you're new here to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe dropping a comment or a like. Or sharing it with a friend and for my returning viewers thank you so much again for your support it really does mean the world to me but yeah i'm excited i uh coming up um i'm planning to do a collaboration draft with ace mtg so if you have checked out his channel i highly recommend uh doing so he's a great player and he was in the um eight man uh, creator tournament that were my last couple of videos there so he hosted that um, so yeah I'm excited about that I'm excited about the play-in tomorrow it's gonna be limited been drafting a bit okay this opening hand looks great we've got some stuff to do happy to keep um, but yeah just uh, really excited about the new set and I think there's just so much potential even though this this video here is standard I'm just thinking forward thinking ahead about limited and um, it's a lot of fun it's so much fun I, I ended up drafting like this blue white detectives deck today went seven and two and whoo it's fun all right up against soldiers um, yeah, let's just go ahead and get Bonacorn going. Just be mana efficient here. Hopefully we can draw into a little bit of action. Haven't seen soldiers in a while. This is, there was a while, kind of way back a couple months ago when I was um, doing a lot of games with soldiers, and it's a super fun deck. Okay, that's a nice pickup. So I think we have enough life gain going. Um, we can start trying to race here a little bit. I'm a little bit concerned because we don't really have anything else in our hand, but I think we still push. I mean, like we're trading, we're trading four for five here. Because, like, there's a decent chance that they have, like, Brew Cathar. And if they do, like, we don't have Skrelv active yet, so we're just missing damage. So I think racing is okay. But yeah, like, I, I don't think it would necessarily be wrong to, like, hold back here. But, like... Yeah, I guess there's, like, they could have, like, Adeline, they could have Brew Cathar, they could have the, um... The two three flyer guy. Yeah, in some ways it's kind of a race and because like once they hit um the three two flyer guy whatever his name is the if they get five soldiers going like we've got to hurry up and, <laughs> and win or they're just going to fly over for game because they can't gain life like we can um so there is like they didn't play brutal cathar last turn maybe they just wanted to like push reinforcements out but there's a decent chance that we should consider using Skrelv this turn offensively um, and like pushing through our Bunnicorn for five. And I think that actually might be correct because they can like, you know, dink around these tokens for quite a while. Um, we're pushing five. I guess we could also like push through like the veteran and then like attack with both. That'd be another option. Um, that actually might not be wrong. Because they're pushing nine on the backswing. 
If we force the Bunnicorn through, they go to 11. Hmm. I mean, like, we're not blocking with Veteran anyways, so I think maybe pushing it through might be correct. Like, we're paying a life for it, but... Hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's actually worth doing. It's a little crazy. So that like I'm not sure if it was better there to like force through the bunicorn or do what we did because they can just play like guys i guess for for days and days so maybe it would have been better to push through bunicorn there because now we're just like taking six taking seven or i suppose we're taking five because they, they don't want to trade veteran Okay, that is a very welcome pickup. So if they play like another veteran next turn, if we force through the Bunicorn, I think we're definitely forcing through Bunnicorn with Skrelv here. We dropped to 15. We've got three blockers. Even if they have like an extra pump, I guess if they have like the 3-2 the flyer or whatever, we're dead. Because um, then we're taking like 4, 7, 10, 13. Yeah, we're dead. Even if we were able to block one of them, I think we're still dead. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, yeah. Alright, so I think let's let's force through the bunicorn. If they have the the flyer guy, we're we're just done. Okay, roaming throne is. I, I'm glad we got the damage in now. I think maybe looking back a couple turns, it would have been better to push through the bunicorn instead of the veteran, because then they would be like way less on life. We could probably just win if we draw a creature. Now it's quite a bit. Yeah, so kind of like. Hindsight there would have, I think, would have been better to use Skrull on Bonacore in the turn before we did. Double trigger because of the throne. So I think, yeah, Voice of the Blessed goes here. Five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. I think we dropped to two. And then, like, on the backswing, if we can play any creature to gain life, like, they block here, they're taking. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we got them. Okay. Unless they have something else in their hand. Because, <laughs> yeah, even if we just send here, they block the 6-6, six, six, then they die. That works for me.
Man, that one point on the veteran. Whew, I'm glad we used Scrub when we did. Probably would have been better to use it on the Bonicorn that first turn, but... I guess they would have had, like, one more creature then, though. So maybe it would have made the difference. Man, every point matters. All right, opening hand looks great. So the question here is, do we want to go one drop, one drop, or nothing, and then two things? Um, I think we probably look for like the best possible because if we don't draw land and we just go like veteran into lurker bat. I think that's probably still good enough. And if we happen to draw like another land that comes in untapped, like then we just like totally get there. So I think you play for the upside. Side. And then we're attacking here because, like, we're never blocking this. Okay, so now the question is, do we want to go for Amalia and try to hit the 3-3? Three, three? Or do we try to go, like, LS Core, set up more lifelink, or, or more life gain? Do we go for the Bat to try to, like, strip their hand? Like, my concern about Bat is that, like, if they have two things that matter, then it's pretty anemic. Um... is tough kind of like going core because it'll like deal with anything on the ground that they have the problem is if they have like a way to do godric and get it in the air next turn that's super rough three cards that's close i think i'm gonna go ellis core here still not blocking with veteran The Death Touch is also nice, because then, like, even if they have, like, Monstrous Rage or something. Okay, land is very welcome. So now I think we can probably safely go Amalia plus something. Um, or we could go, like, Deep Cavern Bat, Rune Lurker Bat to strip their hand. But I think we need like a body to get in the way. And Amalia will help with that. Escort is good. Because like, yeah, we're gonna next turn we're gonna go like deep cavern bat plus escort, so I like that. And I think we wanna keep it. Still not blocking, I don't think.
The pain lands are definitely hurting quite a bit. Okay, so they're representing Monstrous Rage. We have to respect it. Um, I think the play here is we definitely want to block with Amalia. If they use Monstrous Rage, we're taking one point of Trample. Yeah, I think that's the play. I don't think we want to block with Bat, though. Looks like they just want to draw cards, maybe use like a burn spell to finish it. They're deep in the tank. What are they looking at? I wonder what they're considering. Okay. So do they want Frenzy? Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. But, like, Frenzy is... It's better Frenzy than, like, Lightning Bolt to face or whatever. Or Lightning Strike. Okay, unfortunately Escort is not nearly as good without Amalia. So I think we want to go deep Cavern Bat to look upstairs. <sighs> Actually, Bunicorn is pretty good here. Like Bat is good. Hmm, this is close. We've got to start like ending their life total. I think we go one more turn without deep Cavern Bat. Because like just getting like the body out there is super important. Not trading with Scoundrel. Feels weird to like have bat like in my hand for so long, but I also don't know if it's right. Definitely need bat now. So we go to five. Um, how does this work? Next turn they're playing Squee and they get the Kumano token. So they attack with everything. Devastator, Phoenix Chick. I guess since they already have Squee, like, blocking with Cavern Bat isn't that big of a deal. Like, giving them back a Squee. Unless they, like, don't get the mana. Um, God. <sighs> Alright, so they're going to have a 2-2, two -two, a 2-2, two -two, a 1-1, one -one, and the Flyers and the Charming Scoundrel. I think we got to start pushing with, with Bonacorn. Um, like, we're kind of out of time. Man, Bonacarn is like, oh, like if they block here, which they probably do, we hit them for two, they go to 11. They send in, we have three blockers, forced to block all three of them, we'll be at five. They still hit us for two. Yeah. I think we're just like out of time. We gotta get in. I 
I don't know about this attack. Maybe it's better to hold Bunnicorn back, but like... I feel like this is how we win, you know? Okay, they have play with fire also. All right, force blocks. Go to one. We can get them to two, not quite enough. Yeah, I think the pain land just didn't quite get there. Maybe we should, we probably should have used bats sooner. That's probably on me. Um, but at any rate, yeah, because now like we block here, I guess we block here. I guess we gain one, but they play, they play Squee next turn, so we just lose. We can make one Squee more expensive, but not both. Whew, close one. I think my concern about playing bad earlier was like if they have a lot of removal. Um, let's see, hand looks great. Oh hey, it's one of my viewers, it's Will. Hey Will, how's it going? That's so cool. It's great when I see one of my viewers here. <clears throat> And the reason I know is I think you he mentioned in a comment here in one of my recent videos, but that's so cool. Yeah, if you guys run into me um, on ladder, definitely say hi. I always appreciate it. All right, what do we want to do? Let's go... I want the double white for Voice of the Blessed, but I also want like a Molly plus Deep Cavern Bat. So I feel like maybe Deep Cavern Bat is the move. Let's yeah, let's let's start there. I guess let's attack and then like see what they do. Otherwise, actually no, let's since we've got Skrelv up, we can safely just bat them. Okay, there's the cut down. Yeah. So, Sunfall is definitely a good thing to know about. Um, I think we gotta take the Void Rend. But then just be cognizant of Sunfall. Because otherwise they just like void rented to get the sunfall back. All right, let's get Amalia going. Land is very, very welcome. Don't want to play like too much into the Sunfall, but like we can't just be anemic here either. They've got like Deluge next turn into Sunfall. So like how far do we want to go is the real question. We could just like push with this, but again, this is kind of anemic because they can just like sit on. 
can just like sit on Wandering Emperor. Although they don't have Wandering Emperor mana, which is important. They'll just go Deluge. So if I, we like push really hard here and go like voice into Bunicorn, can do a bunch of damage. Maybe that's the way. Like we just gotta pressure them hard. Definitely not sure about this. And we can like try to like win with Fortress if we can do like a lot of damage. So we have like one more, we get to like, we have like one big attack here. Do we want Veteran? I don't think so, I think Veteran's, I guess like Veteran is like an enabler for the, but I think it's kind of low value. But yeah, I mean, like, we can probably just push lethal next turn, though. Like, he has to deluge. Unless he has mana for Emperor. We've already got lethal on board. Yeah, I forgot how quickly this deck just gets out of hand. Okay, I guess we could... Oh, God, we drew Bat. That's so rough. Plus he has like some kind of like other removal or something. I feel like he's at a pretty tough spot here. Should be it. I guess if he has like counter plus removal, then also draws into the land to Sunfall. That's how he gets out of this. But now we just take the Sunfall and it's over. Yeah, I think that's fine to leave around. I guess he has to like, if he draws like Sunfall off the top, because we're hitting here for 10, 11, Actually, if we play another Bunnicorn here, five, six, 11, 12, 13, one short of lethal. Yeah, I guess we hold off just to be a little safe here because we definitely have lethal next turn. Now, even if he, like, plays Emperor, gains some life, he still dies. So, this way he needs, like, board wipe off the top. Actually, board wipe off the top doesn't even do it because he doesn't have the mana for it. Yeah. Yep. Whew, close one. I mean, we needed that bat to get the sunfall. But yeah, the amount of pressure this deck puts out is pretty nasty. All right. Let's take a look at the stats. Okay, so currently 83% win rate, um, five wins and one loss. Ended up um, jamming some games today on my tablet and definitely 
uh, was winning quite a bit. So really happy with this deck. Uh, really close match against Mono Red. But uh, other than that, yeah, doing great. The deck list, will, again, will be in the description. And we will see you guys tomorrow um, for some limited content, hopefully. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.